Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to day 148 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please, if you are on YouTube, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok. We are excited to have you here. Let's get started. Day 148, May 28, 2022. 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, 1 Samuel 21, 1 Samuel 22, 1 Samuel 23. New Testament, John 18, 1 to 24. Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs 13, 10 to 19. Old Testament NIV version, 1 Samuel 21, verse 1 to 15. David at Nob. David went to Nob to Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? David answered Ahimelech the priest. The king sent me on a mission and said to me, No one is to know anything about the mission I am sending you on. As for my men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever you can find. But the priest answered David, I do not have any ordinary bread on hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here, provided the men have kept themselves from women. David replied, In Indeed, women have been kept from us as usual whenever I set out. The men's bodies are holy, even on missions that are not holy. How much more on so today? So the priest gave him the consecrated bread, since there was no bread there except the bread of the presence that had been removed from before the Lord and replaced by hot bread on the day it was taken away. Now, one of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord. He was Doeg, the Edomite, Saul's chief shepherd. David asked Ahimelech, don't you have a spear or a sword here? I haven't brought my sword or any other weapon because the king's mission was urgent. The priest replied, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, is here. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you want it, take it. There is no sword here but that one. David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. David at Gath. That day, David fled from Saul and went to Ashish, king of Gath. But the servant of Ashish said to him, Isn't this David the king of the land? Isn't he the one they sing about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Ashish king of God. So he pretended to be insane in their presence and while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman, making marks on the doors of the gates and letting saliva run down his beard. Ashish said to his servants, Look at the man, he is insane. Why bring him to me? Am I so short of madmen that you have to bring this fellow here to carry on like this in front of me? Must this man come into my house? First Samuel 22 verse 1 to 23. David at Adulam and Mizpah. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. From there, David went to Mizpah in Moab and said to the king of Moab, would you let my father and mother come and stay with you until I learn what God will do for me? So he left them with the king of Moab, and they stayed with him as long as David was in the stronghold. But the prophet God said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold. Go into the land of Judah. So David left and went to the forest of Heret. Saul kills the priest of Nob. Now Saul heard that David and his men had been discovered, and Saul was seated, spear in hand, under the tamarisk tree on the hill at Gibeah, with all his officials standing at his side. 
He said to them, Listen, men of Benjamin, will the son of Jesse give all of you fields and vineyards? Will he make all of you commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? Is that why you have all conspired against me? No one tells me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. None of you is concerned about me or tells me that my son has incited my servant to lie in wait for me, as he does today. But Doek the Edomite, who was standing with Saul's officials, said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Ahimelech, son of Ahitop, at Nob. Ahimelech inquired of the Lord for him. He also gave him provisions and the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent for the priest Ahimelech, son of Ahitob, and all the men of his family, who were the priests at Nob, and they all came to the king. Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahitob. Yes, my lord, he answered. Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword? and inquiring of God for him, so that he has rebelled against me and lies in wait for me, as he does today. Ahimelech answered the king, Who of all your servants is as loyal as David, the king's son-in-law, captain of your bodyguard, and highly respected in your household? Was that day the first day, first time I inquired of God for him? Of course not. Let not the king accuse your servant, or any of his father's family, for your servant knows nothing ab at all about his this whole affair. But the king said, You will surely die, Ahimelech, you and your whole family. Then the king ordered the guards at his side, Turn and kill the priest of the Lord, because he too have sided with David. They knew he was fleeing, yet they did not tell me. But the king's officials were unwilling to raise a hand to strike the priest of the Lord. The king then ordered Doeg, you turn and strike down the priest. So Doeg the Edomite turned and struck them down. That day he killed 85 men who wore the linen ephod. He also put to the sword Nob, the town of the priest, with its men and women, its children and infants, and its cattle, donkeys, and sheep. But one of Ahimelech, son of Atu, named Abiathar, escaped and fled to join David. He told David that Saul had killed the priest of the Lord. Then David said to Abiathar, That day, when Doeg the Edomite was there, I knew he would be sure to tell Saul, I am responsible for the death of your whole family. Stay with me, don't be afraid. The man who wants to kill you is trying to kill me too. You will be safe with me. First Samuel 23 verse 1 to 29. David saves Kiala. When David was told, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah and are looting the threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered, Go, attack the Philistines and save Keilah. But David's men said to him, Here in Judah we are afraid. How much more then if we go to Keilah against the Philistine forces? Once again, David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him, Go down to Keilah, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went to Keilah for the Philistines and carried off their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and saved the people of Keilah. Now Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, had brought the ephod down with him when he fled to David at Keilah. Saul pursues David. Saul was told that David had gone to Keilah, and he said, God has delivered him into my hands, for David has imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars. And Saul called up all his forces of battle to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. When David learned that Saul was plotting against him, he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod. David said, Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Keilah and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Keilah surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? Lord God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will. Again David asked, Will the citizens of Keilah surrender me and my men to, to Saul? And the Lord said, They will. 
So David and his men, about 600 in number, left Keilah and kept moving from place to place. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Keilah, he did not go there. David stayed in the wilderness strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Ziph. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. While David was at Horesh in the desert of Ziph, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horesh and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horesh. The Ziphites went up to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding among us in the strongholds of Horesh on the hill of Hakila south of Jeshimon? Now, your majesty, come down whenever it pleases you to do so, and we will be responsible for giving him into your hands. Saul replied, The Lord bless you for your concern for me. Go and get more information. Find out where David usually goes and who has seen him there. Tell me he is, they tell me he is very crafty. Find out about all the hiding places he uses and come back to me with definite information. Then I will go with you for he is in the area. I will track him down among all the clans of Judah. So they set out and went to Ziph ahead of Saul. Now David and his men were in the desert of Moan in the Araba south of Jeshimon. Saul and his men began the search, and when David was told about it, he went down to the rock and stayed in the desert of Maon. When Saul heard this, he went into the desert of Maon in pursuit of David. Saul was going alone one side of the mountain, and David and his men were on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. As Saul and his forces were closing in on David and his men to capture them, a messenger came to Saul saying, Come quickly, the Philistines are raiding the land. Then Saul broke off his pursuit of David and went to meet the Philistines. That is why they called this place Selah Hamalekot. And David went off from there and lived in the strongholds of En Gedi. New Testament NIV Version, John 18, 1-24 Jesus arrested. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met with his disciples there. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen, went out and asked him, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they threw back and fell to the ground. And he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let this man go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost not one of these you have given me. Hallelujah. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Marcus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Peter's first denial. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back and spoke to the servant girl on duty there and brought Peter in. You are one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and officials stood around the fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them warming himself. 
The high priest questions Jesus. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teachings. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews came together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Psalms and Proverbs. Proverbs 13, verse 10 to 19. Where there is strife, there is pride. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Good judgment wins favor, but the way of the unfaithful leads to their destruction. All who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a trustworthy envoy brings healing. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. A longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but fools detest turning from evil. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, amazing scriptures today. Thank you so much for hanging around with me again today. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Please, if you're here and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, it will be my utmost pleasure to lead you in this amazing prayer of salvation. Please repeat after me, believing in your heart every word you say. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said that prayer, we are so, so, so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead, send us a message. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new faith world. Glory to God. Thank you so much for being here today. Please remember to share this video to your friends, your family and loved ones. Can you follow us on Facebook, on Instagram and on YouTube? Remember to subscribe. Please comment and like on this video. I look forward to another amazing day tomorrow with you. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.